Los Angeles, California. Known for Hollywood, Disneyland, and as America's most famous UFO hotspot. Los Angeles is a major UFO hotspot. The activity here is constant and seems to be escalating. From the 1800s to one of the most deadly UFO battles of all time, this Southern California metropolis experiences it all, including lights in the sky and unexplained objects in the ocean. These sightings mystify the city to this day. Are they truly coming from the heavens above, or is there something off the coast of California that we have yet to discover? What do they want? Why are they here? The answers to these questions will change the way we see the City of Angels forever. Join us as the shocking source of LA's alien invasion is unsealed. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unseal Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. November 1896. Seven years before the Wright brothers achieve human flight. Los Angeles is a small mining community of 50,000 people when local newspapers report mysterious sightings in the skies of California. It is the beginning of a phenomenon. People were scared with what they were reading in the newspapers and even seeing in the skies above their heads. Because again, you didn't have anything to compare it to. They are described as metallic, featureless objects nearly 125 feet long that hover in the night sky. The sightings soon moved down the California coastline to the budding metropolis of Los Angeles. This happened years before LAX was ever a dream. Human flight had not even taken place yet. Whatever was in the skies above our heads was absolutely unexplainable. This started a gigantic UFO wave, which involved not only sightings, but uh, UFOs chasing cars down the road, UFOs landing, a number of abduction cases. It was really an extraordinary UFO wave of uh, pretty much unprecedented proportions. Sightings and accounts of attempted alien abduction are rampant until 1896. But the phenomenon exists to this day. June 14th, 1992. Police switchboards in Los Angeles are flooded with calls describing a very unusual sighting. Normally when someone sees a UFO, there's maybe one or two UFOs. What's really unique about this situation in Topanga Canyon is the number of UFOs that we're seeing. And this, I'm not talking 10 or 20, we're talking literally hundreds. Encountering multiple UFOs is a very rare occurrence, but what truly makes the sighting unique is how common it is in Los Angeles. There are regions on this planet that seem to be a magnet for UFO sightings. In a short period of time, hundreds, if not sometimes thousands of cases are reported. We call these UFO hotspots. These hotspots span the globe. Beijing, China. Brussels, Belgium. Washington, D.C. And Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles is a major UFO hotspot. The National UFO Reporting Service in Washington, the Mutual UFO Network, each receive reports on a daily basis. And we've got over 5,000 reports for uh, California alone. But one element makes LA unlike any other hotspot on the globe. A history of encounters occurring from Los Angeles to Long Beach and out to Catalina Island. Together, these locations form an activity-rich area that has become known as the Devil's Triangle of the West. UFO sightings over Los Angeles have occurred pretty much since the inception of Los Angeles as a city itself. They started in the late 19th century, and they continue all the way to this day. Now that Los Angeles is this huge, sprawling megalopolis, 
Uh, we were having, you know, tens of thousands of reports of UFOs coming in. So many that, you know, we can't handle. But one event in particular made worldwide history. The night we went to war with a UFO. Coming up next, the Battle of Los Angeles has just begun, revealing the most crucial evidence of a UFO conflict in our history. This is the first time that the U.S. military has opened fire on a UFO. We did not know what this object was. And possibly exposing the true purpose of this hotspot. How do UFOs get back and forth from outer space? The answer is they don't. They're right here in L.A. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Widespread sightings from the 1800s to the present have earned Los Angeles, California, the unique title of a UFO hotspot. Where are these craft coming from? But why is this sprawling metropolis, the second largest city in the U.S., victim of an apparent alien invasion? The answer dates back over 50 years. Unsealed case file, the Battle of Los Angeles. February 25th, 1942, only three months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the city of Los Angeles is on the razor's edge. We had just entered World War II. Los Angeles was fearing another Pearl Harbor type attack, but in Los Angeles itself, people were afraid they were next. But on the night of February 25th, their fears become a reality. Suddenly in the dead of night, 100,000 people are awakened in a startling city-wide blackout. Air raid sirens begin to blow, and citizens emerge from their homes to witness something in the skies over Los Angeles. The city appears to be under attack. Nobody knows what this unidentified object is, and the military steps in and does what it does best. It tries to bring it down. And the aircraft guns run into action against unidentified aircraft in the Los Angeles area. Searchlights closely followed the object down the coast and kept it centered in their glare. The military converged on the scene. They focused searchlights on it, and they actually tried to shoot it down. The soldiers at Fort MacArthur fire more than 1,400 anti-aircraft shells in a barrage that should cripple even the strongest aircraft. But the object appears unscathed. No matter what the military throws at this object, we can't penetrate whatever is protecting it. We can't bring it down. This sighting is called the Battle of Los Angeles for a reason. There was shrapnel falling. This was a total blackout, so there was a virtual panic. Actually, five people died. It was a big, big deal. This was a state of war we were in. Watchers could hear the concussion of the guns more clearly, and the flash of bursting shells was brighter. Then the ship disappeared for the second time over the ocean. After 1,400 rounds are fired at this thing, presumably it was undamaged because it just simply flew away out of the sight of the spotlights. We were continually shooting at this object when it just drifted off back to the ocean over the way that it had arrived. What invaded Los Angeles that night? And why couldn't we destroy it? Was it a Japanese warplane? Or could it have been a craft from another world? Even today, people will tell you, it never happened. It was a bunch of people panicking. Wrong. Go back to February 1942 and look at the headlines in the LA Times. It was a real object. Is this photograph from the next morning's Los Angeles Times proof that the craft we went to war with was not of earthly origin? If you look at this photo, you can clearly see this very large, round, glowing object. You can actually see the rounds of ammunition exploding next to it. It's a remarkable photograph that shows what's clearly an unexplained object of some kind. I think the best theory that we have, honestly, is uh, an extraterrestrial craft. The day after the Battle of Los Angeles, President Franklin D. Roosevelt receives a secret memorandum detailing the event. It wasn't until years later, actually, through the Freedom of Information Act, that we were able to get a copy of this uh, memorandum, which basically proves that this event did, in fact, take place. Shortly after Roosevelt reviews the report, a statement is released to the general public, one that tells a different story entirely. 
The military can't identify what exactly this object was, but they had to explain it to the public. And what do they do? They simply claim it was a balloon. When you look at how much firepower was thrown at that thing and nothing touched it, that's not any type of balloon that exists even today. So you, you can't just simply dismiss this event with the military's explanation because it doesn't make sense. Countless experts deny that any balloon could withstand such an attack, but the U.S. military sticks to their explanation to this day. But for those who were there that night, the question remains, where did the craft come from and where did it go? In the decade to come, demands for an explanation would be met with government silence. In 1947, Truman signed the National Security Act, which essentially concealed events like this and potentially future UFO events from the public's eye. It wouldn't be until over a decade later that a charismatic young president would take office and demand that the truth be made public. A demand that may have cost him his life. Coming up next, military officials expose an incident taking alien contact in Southern California to the next level and evidence that the 1942 Battle of Los Angeles may not be our last. A secret so shocking, the government may kill for it. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Since 1896, rampant sightings of unidentified objects have caused Los Angeles to be known worldwide as a UFO hotspot. LA's most famous encounter took place in 1942, when the city witnessed a military attempt to gun down an unknown craft. But the true identity of who invaded California skies that night has never been revealed. You, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who solemnly swear. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Two decades later, newly elected President John F. Kennedy allegedly writes NASA asking for UFO information to solve the enigma. Uh, ten days later, he was shot and killed, assassinated. This UFO subject was so top secret that even at the presidential level, he had trouble finding out the truth. Kennedy was a transitional president potential to really change the course of the 20th century. And what we have learned is that his private agenda was a lot more radical than people knew at the time. He, he had big plans. Could the need for UFO secrecy have led to the assassination of a president? A year later, we may have received an answer. In 1964, at the height of the Cold War, officer in charge Robert Jacobs heads the photographic squadron at Vandenberg Air Force Base in Lompoc, California. Robert Jacobs is one of the uh, more important witnesses that have come forward from out of the military uh, and agencies and even NASA with experiences regarding events that seem to clearly indicate an extraterrestrial presence here. According to Jacobs, his mission was to film an Atlas missile test through all three stages of flight off the coast of Big Sur, hours north of Los Angeles. We have ignition. The Atlas was an intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM, developed and deployed by the U.S. military to deliver a warhead 100 times more powerful than the bomb dropped over Nagasaki. The missile he would film was outfitted with a dummy warhead. It was his job to actually track this uh, Vandenberg missile that was uh, shot off, and uh, he was filming it. And he did his job just as he was ordered to do. The missile failed. It mysteriously failed. In his story, Lieutenant Jacob states he returned to Vandenberg with the film to be developed. Immediately following their processing, Jacobs was ordered to report to his superior officer. He was called into his superior's office, Major Mansman, and there were two plainclothes people there uh, who wanted to question him about what had occurred. And they showed him, actually, the film he took of this missile being shot. This is where it gets really interesting. According to Lieutenant Jacobs, at this stage, a saucer-shaped craft entered the frame. It's maneuvering around this rocket, which is traveling at many thousands of miles an hour. And all of a sudden, it shoots a beam of light. 
into the warhead at the tip of the missile. Moves around, does another one, moves around, does another one, and the, and the warhead falls off. The agents in the room take the footage, and Jacobs is told by his ranking officer that he is never to speak of the incident again. Could it be that Robert Jacobs and his team witnessed an alien presence defending their territory off the coast of Southern California? Like the Battle of 1942, this encounter exposes an alien craft seeming to protect the border between California's land and sea. Perhaps our most recent encounter can answer what these craft may be protecting. Unsealed case file, the hidden UFO portal. On November 8, 2010, an event occurred striking fear in the heart of Los Angeles. An unidentified object came from the ocean and launched over the city up into the sky. When the military was asked about it, they had no idea what it was. They couldn't identify it. The Pentagon, which usually gives an explanation for a UFO event, this time didn't have one. So remember, there's always a discrepancy between what the military tells you it knows and what the military really knows. So all we have to go on is the military said they knew nothing, but witnesses definitely saw a missile coming out of the Pacific. But the images captured on tape by LA locals reveal a much deeper secret. When the object's source is triangulated, it is shown to have launched right from the center of Los Angeles's Devil's Triangle. Its origin, what many believe is a UFO portal off the coast of Los Angeles. The fascinating thing is it might mean there's an underwater base in the Pacific Ocean or in Santa Monica Bay or in the Redondo Trench off Southern California. That has tremendous implications because when people say, how do UFOs get back and forth from outer space? The answer is they don't. They're right here in LA. Is it possible that an extraterrestrial base is located under the water just outside Los Angeles? If so, why has it never been found? Could it be that this UFO portal is the evidence of an alien city just off the coast of California? A city that has only just now been discovered. The Vatican, epicenter of the Roman Catholic faith representing one-sixth of the planet's population. It is one of the world's oldest and most powerful institutions, either at the center of faith or controversy. Most recent and shocking that this holy order could be part of one of the biggest cover-ups in UFO history. The church is getting ready to embrace life outside of planet Earth as part of creation. According to UFO theorists, Vatican officials have possessed knowledge of alien life for centuries. A claim so explosive and world-changing that generations of popes and cardinals have categorically denied the accusations. But what if the claims are true? It's believed even to this day that not everything has been revealed. Tonight, we will reveal what extraterrestrial secrets could lie behind the walls of this religious citadel, including shocking admissions by members of the church and possible proof of alien life that's allegedly been buried for centuries. Join us as the secret history of aliens and the Vatican is unseen. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed. Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. April 2nd, 2005. Pope John Paul II, the second longest serving pope in history, dies. He is praised as being one of the most influential leaders in the 20th century. April 8th, at 6.03 a.m., hours before John Paul's funeral, an unidentified flying object is filmed by a security camera observing St. Peter's Basilica. Could this mysterious object be evidence of a connection between the Vatican and alien life? A connection that theorists and historians believe has existed since the creation of the church. 
the possibility that this craft came to pay its respects to the Pope and his people is more likely than you think. Among the most secret of secrets in the Catholic Church, is there a belief in extraterrestrials? Torin, Poland, 1543. Nicholas Copernicus marks the beginning of modern astronomy, showing that Earth revolves around the sun, and not the other way around. Five years later, Giordano Bruno is born in Naples, southern Italy. Bruno takes the theories of Copernicus further by suggesting that science dictates life on other planets. Bruno's theory about the cosmos said that the people of Earth were not the only people in our universe. That didn't sit too well with the church. In 1600, Bruno is found guilty of heresy and burned at the stake. He is the first person in history to be executed by the Catholic Church for beliefs that include the possibility of extraterrestrials. Was Bruno sacrificed to cover up a secret the church has allegedly hidden for the past 1,500 years? That church believed that we as humans, God made us the center of everything and we were just kind of the be all and end all. But the reality was that it was much bigger, there was much more out there. In fact, possible ties between the Catholic faith and alien forms are nearly as old as the religion itself. Strange-looking craft begin to appear in Christian art as early as the 1400s. Quite frequently, artists would put symbols in the sky, but uh, in a couple of cases, they kind of look like flying saucers. One painting, the Madonna with San Giovannino, depicts the Lady Madonna in the foreground and San Giovannino in the background pointing up to the sky, and he sees a craft that is clearly visible in the painting. In the Middle Ages and through the Renaissance, they would take events from the present and depict them in the paintings. These were real things that people saw in the sky. In The Miracle of the Snow, you have a painting of Jesus and Mary above, and below it appears to be a what could be described as a fleet of UFOs or flying saucers directly below them. The Baptism of Christ, painted in 1710, shows what looks like a flying saucer beaming down toward Jesus. The crucifixion features a pair of what look like UFOs. Are the objects captured in these works of art records of religious devotion or evidence of the church's connection to spacecraft and perhaps even creatures from another world? Now, I'm sorry, that's not a winged angel or a depiction of God. What was that 500 years ago? We don't know. The discs seen throughout the history of Christian art are an identical match to recordings and reports of modern-day UFOs. Were these artists adding images they had seen or heard about from eyewitnesses? And when UFOs are so clearly seen throughout history, why has the church denied their presence? Is the Vatican truly hiding knowledge of alien life? And have we only just now discovered it? It's very likely that some of the religious experiences that have been discussed and written about for centuries were in fact extraterrestrial in nature. Coming up next, the Vatican investigates one of the largest mass UFO sightings of all time and breaks their silence on the extraterrestrial truth after reports that alien remains were allegedly found buried right under the church. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. From images of spacecraft in Christian art to unidentified objects over the church, the Vatican has long been associated with extraterrestrial phenomena, even though they have executed believers of alien life for heresy. But no connection has been greater than the Vatican's involvement in some of the largest mass UFO sightings in history. Unsealed case file, the sighting at Fatima. 1917, the climax of World War I. Portugal attempts to remain neutral in the global conflict. The country is gripped with fear, and its people are looking for a sign of what's to come. 
On October 13th, 1917, in Fatima, Portugal, a mass UFO sighting with more than 70,000 witnesses took place. During the event, the rain stopped. Some witnesses believed that the clouds parted and what was described as a saucer-shaped craft came down from the heavens above towards Earth. According to eyewitnesses, three children approached the vision and witnessed an apparition of a beautiful woman. The vision reportedly included a glowing globe-shaped vehicle, showering rose petals that disappeared upon hitting the ground. According to the girls, the apparition gave them a cryptic message. Over the years, they attribute that to being the Virgin Mary, but it's very possible that this could have been something else. That apparition, that vision, gave a prophecy to those three little girls, and it was a vision of the future, a prophecy of the future. The message has been interpreted as images from an apocalyptic future. It is filled with flaming swords and so-called demons who come in the forms of frightful and unknown animals. Could the Vatican be hiding details that this frightening message is warning of a coming alien invasion? A lot of the information for Fatima really didn't come out until about the year 2000. It's believed even to this day that not everything has been revealed. If this really was a message from another world, and it was a warning, a lot of people ask, should we know? Visions, lights in the sky, sightings and messages from strange beings. Reports of possible UFO activity continue to be reported around the world. And according to experts, the Vatican openly investigates them. In 2011, a group of people um, on the Ivory Coast of Africa saw a light in the sky. It wasn't just a light in the sky, it was a diamond-shaped light in the sky. And it was so vivid, so compelling, that for that moment, that group was transfixed by the light. And it changed their lives. Recently, such unidentified sightings have increased around the world. Peru, Brazil, Russia, and China, all UFO hotspots, report mass sightings that seem to come as visions. Unlike any nation, the Catholic Church has no borders. Its 1.2 billion followers are spread worldwide, a global network of eyes and ears looking for the unexplained. Is this what has finally convinced the Vatican to come forward and admit the existence of alien life? Unsealed case file, the Vatican's alien ambassadors. Just outside Rome stands Castel Gandolfo, a satellite Vatican estate that serves as the summer residence of the Pope and headquarters for Vatican astronomers. Two large domes on the roof each house massive telescopes used to study the heavens since the 1930s. The astrophysicists at Vatican Observatory have been interested in the question of extraterrestrial life for quite a while. Dr. Funes, the Vatican Observatory director, affirmed the possibility of the existence of extraterrestrial intelligences. In a universe uh, so big, huge, I would say, 100 billion of galaxies, with uh, each galaxy with a uh, hundred billion of stars. Uh, probably with uh, many of these stars uh, having planets, it would be possible that uh, life could evolve the way we know on Earth. Was there real solid evidence that something's going on inside the Vatican? Well, there is. You have the Vatican itself declaring that if extraterrestrial life exists, it's part of God's creation. But the most public evidence came in November of 2009, when the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, the Vatican Science Department, held a conference of over 30 scientists and religious leaders in Rome. The subject, life on other planets, its possibility, and its ramifications. They're literally putting up a, a neon sign saying, we're down with ETs. But the biggest bombshell may be what they found underneath the Vatican. Coming up next, a repository of Vatican secrets that's existed for 500 years is opened up. And shocking new images could reveal the ultimate discovery, remains of an alien being.
This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. The Vatican has denied the existence of extraterrestrials since the creation of the church. But recently, Vatican officials have publicly acknowledged the likelihood of alien life. This dramatic reversal of Vatican policy demands an explanation. What does the church know? Or what have they found that causes them to reverse a 2,000 year old opinion? The answer to this may be found within the Vatican secret archives. It's thousands and thousands of volumes and it's been kept for well over a thousand years. This is bigger than the National Archives. And according to alien theorists, it is here that the Vatican keeps reports of all investigated UFO occurrences, far from prying eyes. The Vatican Secret Archive is uh, approximately uh, 52 miles of shelving, we're told, and over 32,000 archives. What could possibly be in there? 1977. U.S. President Jimmy Carter is one of the only presidents ever to claim to have seen a UFO. Carter intends to publicly reveal all the information the U.S. government has on alien existence. He asks the Library of Congress to reach out to all possible sources regarding UFO intelligence. But when the library's contacts reach out to the Vatican, requesting disclosure of all files with evidence of alien life, the Vatican refuses twice. But the secrets hidden within the Vatican can't stay buried forever. Now, new evidence may prove the Vatican is hiding actual aliens from the public. Unsealed case file, the alien skulls. Here's a strange story. In 1998, there were excavations being done under the Vatican Library. And one of the workers on the excavation team found the strange skulls. They were elongated, extended skulls. They looked like what you would think a gray alien skull would look like. The oversized, slanted eye sockets, the relatively small nose and mouth, the dome-like cranium, the similarities between its structure and the heads of the gray alien, the ET life form most commonly described by witnesses, are obvious. But why are skulls allegedly under the Vatican? If these bones could talk, what stories would they tell? After the discovery of those strange skulls, Pope John Paul and the Vatican military closed all access to the site. What is the Vatican hiding? And did those skulls make their way into the secret Vatican archives? The Catholic Church has had 1,500 years in which they could have recovered alien bodies from their investigations into unexplained sightings. Could these skulls be the remnants of aliens who once lived in the Vatican? The Vatican is built on the ruins of ancient Rome. And underneath the Vatican is what's known as a necropolis. A necropolis is a vast burial ground. So there could be skulls dating back not just to 2,000 years from the birth of Christ, but all the way dating back to the beginning of Rome. Perhaps the conclusion was best put by a nun who stated, whatever those remains represent, there's a reason why the good fathers buried them there to be forgotten. If the theories are true, then the Vatican has intimate knowledge of the secrets behind aliens on planet Earth. But do they ever plan to release that secret to the public? The church is getting wet, no doubt about it to embrace life outside of planet Earth, off planet Earth, as part of creation. But if the Vatican is planning to reveal alien life in our near future, what discovery will cause the church to come forward? And how will the Vatican handle these alien beings? These uh, are ethical issues that uh, we need to be prepared to deal with, and people of government need to think about these things before they happen. One global event may uncover the truth sooner than we ever imagined possible. Coming up, the event that could force the Vatican to admit everything they know about the truth of alien life in our universe and reveal the Church's role in the future of planet Earth. The next stage of alien
aliens and the Vatican may involve human domination, but will it be at the hands of an extraterrestrial race or the church? The moon. For decades, we dreamt of sending people to its surface, wondering what secrets we may discover. Now, more than 40 years after we touch down, evidence shows we may not know the whole truth about what or who NASA found on the moon. Something strange is happening on the moon, and we believe it's not human. Doctored photos, UFO sightings by astronauts, and allegations of a massive cover-up plague NASA's five-decade history. What did astronauts find on the moon? And what did they bring back with them? Tonight, we expose the secret side of space missions the world has never seen. Join us as the hidden truth behind NASA and aliens on the moon is unsealed. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Beginning in 1968, NASA's Apollo space program sent nine manned missions to the moon. The astronauts on board are the only humans to have ever set foot on an alien world. I kind of have two moons in my head. I look at the moon just like everybody else who's never been there, uh, and, you know, there it is. And I, I've, I've always thought it was interesting. But every once in a while, I do think of a second moon, you know, the one that I recall from up close. Alien theorists have long believed NASA has known of and perhaps even made contact with alien life. But the history of putting a man on the moon did not begin with a liftoff. It began with a crash. July 8, 1947, Roswell, New Mexico. Reports of a downed UFO send shockwaves across America. The U.S. Air Force responds immediately. What they discover changes the world forever. A UFO crashed in Roswell in 1947. We recovered technology. We recovered alien bodies. We recovered a live alien, a living extraterrestrial entity. What do we do with this? During the Cold War, the Soviet Union and the United States were competing on multiple fronts. Not necessarily fighting a war with bullets, but a war with technology. And of course, anything extraterrestrial would also mean very exotic technology and would be of extreme importance to the U.S. Army. The next 10 years see inventions decades ahead of their time. The hydrogen bomb, solar power, microchips, lasers, and the U.S.'s crowning achievement, NASA's powered spacecraft. Now it is time to take longer strides. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. When Kennedy put forth the national goal for America to put a man on the moon, the facade was it was to beat the Russians. But it was about a lot more than that. The scientific breakthroughs that we were going to accomplish getting a man to the moon was something that far surpassed any politics. In 1964, the Ranger 7 was the first spacecraft that was able to beam back images of the moon's surface. The Ranger 7 returned 4,308 photos of an alien world we had never seen up close. The moon. Now what's not talked about is some of the actual photographs that weren't shown publicly. A case can be made that in fact they were able to transmit images back to Earth and that they did show artificial structures on the moon. And so people in the United States at the very least were aware that there were very likely alien bases on the moon. As humans get closer to setting foot on the moon, strange and unusual events begin to unfold. June 1965, 
NASA transcripts between astronaut James McDivitt of the Gemini spacecraft may reveal a report of the first UFO sighting in space. According to the transcript of the Gemini mission, astronaut McDivitt says, I just saw something else up here with me, but just as I was getting close enough to take a good picture, the sun got in the way and I lost it. It had big arms sticking out of it. It looked like I only had it for just a minute. After many of the Gemini astronauts started to see things in space, they came up with code words like fire, bogey, even Santa Claus to describe craft that they were seeing flying outside of the spaceship. On December 24th, 1968, the Apollo 8 spacecraft makes the first successful orbit around the moon. This is something that many people could easily dismiss as just being a reference to uh, the upcoming Christmas Day. Uh, but many others have said, well, Santa Claus was in fact one of the code words used. And this was his way of communicating to Cape Canaveral that in fact that they were seeing a UFO. Coming up, man first walks on the moon and finds out what's there waiting for him. If UFO historians are correct, America's dominance in the Cold War with the USSR depended on one primary objective, land a man on the moon and make contact with an alien presence before the Soviets could do it first. If there was extraterrestrial exotic technology on the moon, that would definitely fuel our need to get there first and the fastest so that we could reverse engineer this technology and use it for our own military purposes. If these theories are true, the fate of America and perhaps mankind was in the hands of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, the crew of Apollo 11. Unsealed case file. Dark Side of the Moon Landing. July 16th, 1969, Apollo 11 was launched. The entire world was watching. The mission? Be the first humans to land on the moon. And as UFO experts believe, be the first to make contact with alien life. A terrifying prospect. The moon's surface seems very inhospitable, uh, forbidding almost. A hostile place, uh, a scary place. What could be hidden in the conversations between Apollo 11 astronauts and Capcom, the Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas? And Gravity Base here. The Eagle has landed. Rocket clang, tranquility. We copy you on the ground. According to UFO theorists, the most significant moment came when the transmission from Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong suddenly cut off for two minutes. Supposedly, in that audio transmission, there's a missing two minutes. What could have been in those missing two minutes? Now, there has been some unofficial uh, radio communications that have been circulated saying that basically, Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin saw UFOs on the moon. No, no, this is not an optical illusion. No one's going to believe this. What's this? What's this? I say that there were other spaceships that lined up in the other side of the crater. There, there they are, and they're watching us. This was something that had been intercepted through ham, amateur ham radio and basically released through unofficial sources. There were a number of uh, NASA officials that claimed that this, is, in fact, was a genuine transmission from Neil Armstrong. Anytime we look at the communication taking place between Capcom and astronauts in space, there are two channels in use. There's the public channel relaying information. There's also the secret channel or the Department of Defense line where they can cut off the public feed and communicate securely between the astronauts and Capcom. NASA has never confirmed that the conversation took place. But even Buzz Aldrin himself has come forward stating that an unknown object was spotted outside Apollo 11. Could Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin be our first human ambassadors to space and have met aliens on the moon?
but it seems very possible that NASA already knew from the inception, sending people to the moon, that they had planned on doing some type of communication with other advanced beings. When Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong first walked on the moon, they planted an American flag and a plaque commemorating the mission. But they also reportedly left behind two items with a message. One was a gold olive branch of peace. The other was a silicon disc. On it were recorded statements of goodwill from 73 world leaders and the names of key U.S. Congress members and NASA. But if NASA never anticipated making contact with alien life, why did they prepare these greetings of peace before they went to the moon? What it means to anybody approaching this with an open mind is A, we're aware of an ET presence, and we're making a peace offering to ETs. Did Apollo 11, with their messages of peace, forge a bond with an alien race that continues to this day? Or did something happen out there that keeps mankind from returning? In my personal opinion, uh, there are alien bases on the moon, and they understood that there were a lot of political factors as to why the Apollo missions had to go ahead. But there have been a number of, of people who've worked with NASA saying that the aliens up there basically said, well, this is our turf, you don't belong here, and don't come back. Coming up, future missions expose the truth behind astronauts and UFO contact. We have an unidentified flying object. And NASA insiders reveal the secret behind photos we weren't meant to see. You won't believe your eyes. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration landed a man on the moon in 1969. An event that may also have been our first contact with alien life, but is evidence of what NASA found on the moon hiding behind the biggest alleged cover-up in the history of space exploration. Unsealed case file, NASA's alien secret. NASA shuttle mission STS-73, October 21st, 1995. Astronaut Catherine G. Coleman is working in the space lab module of NASA's U.S. Microgravity Lab when she declares something to Capcom. We have an unidentified flying object. It's fascinating how uh, astronaut Coleman was not panicked by this. Why wasn't she panicked by this? Well, very simply, as we reach out into space, as the space shuttle became commonplace at NASA, what was also commonplace were appearances of alien craft that were shadowing the shuttle. We have an unidentified flying object. The recording is investigated by a U.S. congressman. NASA responds that the comment was simply an innocuous remark. They also claim a sighting was impossible, as the space lab had no windows. But this diagram from the NASA website shows otherwise. Catherine Coleman from SBS 73 said, we have an unidentified flying object. If you're looking for confirmation, there it is. I think the last few decades have proven that NASA is definitely covering up something when it comes to the connection between UFOs and our astronauts. But what is it? This image appears to be a simple photo of the moon's Tycho crater, taken on June 10th, 2011. But look closer. By simply adjusting the exposure of actual NASA photographs, an apparent cover-up becomes crystal clear. What's very interesting about this photograph is that everything seems to be somewhat normal, but then you come to a little spot on the photograph of something that it, 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 the only way to describe it is being blacked out. It's actually omitted. They cut something out of the photograph that they didn't want you and I to see. Behind this photo editing may lie what alien theorists have suspected all along. Proof of structures or alien craft hidden on the moon. Well, this uh, object that was blacked out on the Tycho uh, crater is, is the size of a football field. And it could be anything, uh, a, a base of some kind uh, that basically is being currently occupied by aliens or, or some entity that NASA doesn't want the public to know. If we look at some of the reports that actually have taken place where when we've gone to the moon, sent our astronauts there, they report seeing a full-on extraterrestrial base. 
it's possible that what we photographed on the moon in entirety was never shown to the general public. Apollo 16, April 21st, 1972. This image shows astronaut John Young saluting the American flag by the lunar roving vehicle. But what it doesn't show becomes more clear by adjusting the exposure. There's a very famous photograph, astronaut John Young, and he's saluting over his shoulder, all the way in the distance. There's a hanging light. Is it a UFO? Is it an orb? Is it actual proof of an extraterrestrial presence? On the right of John Young, on the right of the photo, there are razor marks. The razor marks are the telltale results of somebody trying to scratch out something from the photo. But in this particular case, some NASA photo processor was trying to doctor the photo with a razor to scratch out evidence of an alien presence on the moon. Dr. Farouk El Baz was head of astronaut training in the Apollo program for six years. While in mission control, he witnessed some of these unusual sightings firsthand. The one most peculiar sighting of something that we never found out what it was and we thought it should be easy to was the sighting of flashes on the surface of the moon by Ken Mattingly during the Apollo 16 mission. One of the objectives of that Apollo 16 mission was to see how much can we see and photograph in the part of the moon that is not lit by the sun. The first time Ken Mattingly began to do this, he said, I just saw a flash. If Albaz is saying that the Apollo astronauts saw more than we understand and that we are led to believe that there really were UFOs out there, or flashes of light, I think somebody in his position would know more than anybody. And I think we have to pay attention to that. But the deepest secrets of an alien cover-up may not come from NASA insiders. Recently, one man allegedly broke into the computer files of NASA to uncover what could be the most shocking discoveries yet. His name is Gary McKinnon. Gary McKinnon was a UFO investigator. What he found in the NASA classified files was evidence that NASA knew about UFOs. The files he allegedly uncovered are enough for the U.S. government to attempt extradition from his native England. He currently could face charges leading up to 70 years in prison and $2 million in fines. If McKinnon could really prove his story, it would be huge for the UFO community because finally that proof and evidence would be there that NASA is part of that cover-up. Coming up next, we reveal the document that could prove that alien life not only exists on the moon, but that aliens are among us now, right here on planet Earth. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. From the bubonic plague in the 14th century to deadly modern day afflictions, our species has been infected with diseases that don't seem to be of earthly origins. Are they the product of an alien race? They suddenly appear in a population and they seem to take it over. Countless experiences dating back thousands of years link the appearance of UFOs with the darkest times in human history. Do these viruses appear naturally on our planet? Or are they the result of a secret and sinister alien agenda? Tonight, we find out. Join us as the terrifying secret behind alien plagues is unsealed. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. June 2012. Residents in southern Brazil and northern Argentina report sightings of an unusual group 
of globe-shaped UFOs. A UFO was seen hovering over the ocean in both daytime and nighttime. What was very interesting about this was the object really didn't seem to do anything. It just kind of hovered over the ocean. Three weeks later, only one mile from the location of the sighted craft, Brazilian citizens stumble upon a horrifying scene. More than 500 penguins, dead and scattered along the shoreline. There have been cases of mass animal deaths throughout planet Earth. But what's very interesting about the penguins washing up ashore was that it was very closely connected to UFO sightings that happened just weeks prior. They didn't look like they had died of starvation. They didn't look like they died of trauma. They didn't look like they died of dehydration. So the question you have to ask is, was there any correlation between the two events? Every year, strange incidents are reported involving the sudden and unexplained deaths of hundreds, even thousands of animals. Could these stories be connected to alien visitation? This is what's happened with birds uh, in the United States, and this is what happened with penguins off Brazil and Argentina uh, right after the UFO site. Could the deaths be caused by extraterrestrial craft spreading plagues to our world? And if these alien plagues exist, could they affect the human race? Many of the diseases that come out of the Dark Ages also have some very mysterious characters attached to these events. Were these actual just earthbound viruses? Or were they possibly some other experiment or biological DNA that arrived here whole and complete as a virus? Could the first evidence of an alien plague date all the way back to the Middle Ages? In England, 1348, the Hundred Years' War between France and England engulfed the nation. Suddenly, all across the Mediterranean and European countries, a rampant disease tore through the population. It becomes known as the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague was one of the deadliest eras in human history. It's estimated that 100 million people fell victim and later died. Death is quick. Within two to seven days of infection, but in that time, victims experience agonizing pain, including death of skin tissue, earning it the name, the Black Death. Prior to death, victims claim to see bronze ships in the sky, glowing gold shields, and strange mists covering the ground. You have to ask yourself, if people are having these hallucinations, these mass hallucinations of bronze ships in the sky, you have to ask, were they seeing a hallucination or could it have really been a UFO craft. Many witnesses during the era of the bubonic plague saw multiple comets in the skies over Europe in areas that fell victim to this deadly disease. It is very possible that this disease came on board one of those comets from deep space and never even was born here on Earth. Shortly before the bubonic plague ever hit certain parts of Europe, townspeople also see black hooded men carrying sickles just outside of town but they are not tending to the fields. This image may be the origin of what we know as the Grim Reaper, but many alien theorists have wondered, could this be the first recorded history of the men in black? Many believe the bubonic plague was just a dark era of human history that hit us hard with a disease that we couldn't fight. But there's others that believe there's a much more darker explanation, that it's possible that an extraterrestrial race could have brought the disease here to Earth. If the disease was intentionally sent to humans by an alien race, there's one word for that, genocide. Coming up next, are we under a biological attack from the stars or simply the victims of an experiment gone wrong? New evidence shows how the next alien plague may reach Earth. But is it already too late? This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. For thousands of years, plagues have haunted mankind exterminating millions of people. It was once thought that these diseases were natural, but could they be the creation of an extraterrestrial race? What if these were engineered diseases to somehow control the population here on Earth by introducing these as something that would be able to reduce the population very quickly? Would an intelligent, 
and civilized species travel to their neighbor's world just to secretly murder them with disease? If it sounds too horrible to believe, look back at our own history. In 1763, soldiers from Fort Pitt gave a rebelling Indian tribe a stack of blankets that had been infected with the smallpox disease. This was an incredibly fatal scenario for the Native Americans because it nearly wiped them all out. So if one civilization wants to destroy another, one of the easiest ways would be just to introduce a new disease that they can't combat. Countless deaths originating from a simple blanket. If aliens are sending plagues to mankind, what forms could they arrive in? Our food supply? The air we breathe? What about our weather? Unsealed case file. The alien rain. Kerala, India, June 2001. It's an unusually dry monsoon season when this tropical paradise experiences a sudden and terrifying change of weather. The sky opens up and rain pours down upon the land and people of Kerala. Blood red rain. The people who lived, that population, had never seen red rain. And obviously they were scared to death. They didn't know what it was. They couldn't figure it out. All they knew was something was very wrong. As scientists scramble to explain this crimson storm, an incredible discovery is made. Modern scientists were collecting the pools of red rain, and they analyzed it. What was it? What was causing the color of the rain? What they found was a protein substance, the residue of a life form, of some kind of bacteriological life form in the water that was causing it to turn red. Scientists also reveal an unexpected conclusion behind its origin. They report that the red particles may have been spread through the atmosphere by a meteorite. In other words, it was other world extraterrestrial. In the case of the red rain, uh, no one was, no one fell sick because of what fell off of the uh, this meteorite or the red rain that followed. Uh, but it does illustrate um, the possibility of a foreign object falling from space and then infecting our population and um, us not being able to deal with it. And that's a little concerning. Satellites have photographed UFOs on planets as close as Mars and as far as Saturn. Could extraterrestrials be sending rocks from these planets as meteorites filled with a viral payload? And what happens when they collide? with Earth. September 15th, 2007. The village of Carancas in southern Peru. A huge fireball streaks across the sky and slams into planet Earth. Locals, shocked by the blast, are terrified. The result is a 100 foot wide by 20 foot deep impact crater with a bubbling pool of liquid at the bottom. Local residents quickly report strange and frightening side effects. When it crashed, it, it, it threw up a whole bunch of noxious gas that spread very rapidly. And in the immediate time frame of that crash, people living near the site became very, very sick. They were clearly poisoned by something. An estimated 600 people are affected by the sickness. Fear spreads throughout the city that an alien virus is becoming a pandemic. But reportedly, investigators cannot determine the specific cause. I think it's safe to say there's probably a connection between the meteorite and this mysterious illness. Because let's face it, the day prior, no meteorite, no illness. The day after, meteorite, now you have a mysterious illness. So chances are, whatever that illness was, it came on that meteorite. Are these cosmic projectiles actually bioweapons of mass destruction? And if so, could this be a declaration of intergalactic war? If you're gonna wipe out another civilization, generally bombs and guns shouldn't be your first choice. Because quite frankly, you're gonna put your own people in harm's way. The real way to do it would be with a virus or disease. Because let's face it, you can fight and win a war without ever losing a single life. 
Coming up next, vicious diseases that refuse to die and mysterious bugs under our skin. We explore the possible alien plagues of today and find out if you could be at risk when we return. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Alien theorists believe there is evidence proving extraterrestrials are not only capable of spreading disease on Earth, but that it's been happening for thousands of years. But is it too late for the human race? Humans have successfully battled every plague that either Mother Nature or someone or something else has thrown at us. But there could be one day that the next plague that hits us, we can't fight off. Some of mankind's ancient killers, such as bubonic plague, are historically linked to alien sightings. Did we overcome this great affliction? Or, as UFO encounters have increased in the past 50 years, could it be making a comeback? Many believe that the bubonic plague threat is over, but there are reported cases even up until this day, and the last full-scale outbreak occurred just a couple of decades ago. This virus, once thought to be gone forever, simply refuses to die. If aliens are fighting humanity with disease, how long until they find the ultimate weapon, one that cannot be stopped? H1N1, SARS, even poliomyelitis and AIDS have strange origins. They suddenly appear in a population and they seem to take it over. But could the most alien affliction to ever infect mankind already be among us? Unsealed case file, the Morgellons infestation. In 2002, there was a woman who had a son uh, who was complaining about sores or bugs in his mouth. And uh, these were, uh, she opened his mouth and there were sores. The mother reports red, blue, black, and white fibers within the sores. According to the victim, she visited eight doctors, all of whom were unable to find any signs of earthly disease. They dismissed Morgellons as an actual disease or a virus harming the human body. Well, there's been multiple cases from around the globe of Morgellons that cannot be explained. The symptoms are real, the victims are real. They have something inside their body that they can't explain, but to them it's real. The affliction becomes known as Morgellons. Sufferers describe small fibers protruding from their skin causing piercing pain. The threads are multicolor, often black, red, blue. They express out of the sores. When you examine the threads at a microscopic level, uh, they almost seem to be engineered. But worst of all, they experience the feeling that bugs have infested their bodies, crawling on and inside their skin. Since 2002, Morgellons has become a phenomenon with a recorded 12,000 alleged cases over eight years. Could it be, as alien theorists believe, that Morgellons has come to the Earth from an alien race? Imagine feeling things crawling through or under your skin, even out of your body. To you, that's something that has to be alien. If this disease is a plague from another world, it has never proven to be fatal. But could a modern alien disease have the power to kill? We really have no idea where these unexplained diseases come from. But all it needs to wipe humanity out for good is for it to progress faster than we can fight it. According to scientists, a highly contagious disease could travel from one major city to another within a week. From there, it could spread quickly through the country and eventually the world. I think if extraterrestrials came to Earth with the intention of making some type of disease and, and letting it loose in our population, there really could be a number of scenarios why. What if these were some type of, again, biological bacteria from extraterrestrials that were just accidentally transmuted around being in contact with them? Could it be that alien plagues have simply been viruses passed on to victims of alien abduction? 
If aliens are visiting the planet Earth, chances are they're going to be biologically based just like humans are. That means viruses and bacteria are going to affect that living life form in the exact same way. An alien can bring some type of virus to Earth and transmit it to us with absolutely no problem. Throughout history, viral outbreaks have been the product of human error. From the mad cow epidemic, to the alleged escape of Lyme disease from New York's Plum Island, could an extraterrestrial virus leak from alien laboratories by accident? They land on planet Earth and insinuate themselves into the population and the virus they're carrying could be spread to the human beings. And if that kind of virus came to planet Earth, that's exactly how a pandemic could spread. But many believe there is evidence that extraterrestrial plagues are part of a much more complex plan, one that reveals we are all subjects in human experimentation. Coming up next, the truth behind alien plagues on planet Earth is revealed, exposing an alien plot that will change the very genetics of the human race. It is said we are living in the golden era of human technology. Mankind went from the Wright brothers to the moon in under a century. Is this staggering progress simply the product of human ingenuity? Or have we received help from another world? There's enough evidence out there that there's a UFO cover-up. Alien intelligence be the driving force behind humanity's greatest advances? And will it be the cause of our demise? Tonight, we explore the secret behind mankind's astonishing scientific achievements. Join us as the secrets of alien technology are unsealed. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades detailing every UFO account are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unseal Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. June 14th, 2012, Washington, D.C. Residents are shocked to see what looks like a UFO passing on the back of a flatbed truck. Hundreds of calls flood 911 dispatch. The city is buzzing with UFO fever. Yes, sir, this is a 911 operator. It looks like a UFO, to be honest with you. What does it look like? A UFO, I mean, I don't really know. I don't, I don't see too many UFOs on the regular basis. I mean, does it, it look like, like uh, does it look like yeah. a spaceship? Yeah. Everybody was scared because all of a sudden they saw this craft that was shrouded with some type of covering that looked exactly like a UFO. The government reports it is an X-47B drone, a next generation aircraft. But does this cutting edge technology have its roots in science from another world? When you look at the technology that we have in our United States military, it really does look like it's out of the pages of science fiction. But this isn't the first highly advanced piece of technology that we've wondered about its origin. Could this technology have come from alien intelligence? To answer that, we must go back to ancient India, to the stories of highly advanced flying machines known as the Vimanas. The first account of Vimanas dates back almost 2,500 years. It tells of kings riding on glowing chariots that come from the sky. Chariots that shine like the sun and are piloted by gods. Common sense tells you that if it's uh, 3000 BC and something turns up in the sky and even perhaps lands and entities get out of them, they are going to be viewed as gods. But could it be, as alien theorists believe, that the beings reported by this ancient civilization were in fact visitors from another world? From a modern context, you come away from that with the idea that these weren't gods, these weren't deities, these weren't strange sun chariots that they were flying. These were actual UFOs over planet Earth. 
These descriptions may be the first evidence of mankind's obsession with craft from outer space, but they are far from the last. Abydos, Egypt. Within the Temple of Seti are ancient hieroglyphs, amazing pictures that tell a story defying logic and human history. On the walls of these Egyptian edifices, there seem to be hieroglyphic depictions of an aircraft. There's a helicopter, another type of aircraft. It looks like there's a submarine. What could explain that? Could the inspiration for our technology have come from alien intelligence? Are these ancient records of UFO sightings? Or, as some experts believe, are they crude blueprints of technology that would not be invented for another 3,000 years? You have to wonder, were these flying machines in the sky during ancient Egyptian times? Is this something that they built themselves? Or this could be proof that something was in our skies thousands of years ago. But is the strongest evidence of alien intelligence within the technology we use every day? Coming up next, were the greatest inventions of our lifetime stolen from a crashed alien spacecraft? Army officers say the missile found sometime last week has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico. And could the secrets we uncovered be the beginning of the end for all mankind? This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Jet propulsion, genetic engineering, computer science. It's possible that the greatest technical leaps in human history happened in the last six decades. But who or what? is responsible for our sudden evolution. If alien theorists are correct, the answer may be found in the biggest UFO cover-up of the 20th century and the events that took place the day after Roswell. Unsealed case file, the day after Roswell. 1947, Roswell, New Mexico, a quiet all-American town home to local Air Force personnel. In early July, troops investigate reports of a crashed saucer in the hostile desert. Allegedly, the site is quickly secured, but not before soldiers, firemen, and local residents reportedly see what appears to be a downed alien craft and its occupants dead. But are the stories true? Just after the wreckage was found in Roswell, New Mexico, the military came out and said that they had captured a flying saucer. Newspapers ran the story. Radio reports were blasted out through the airwaves. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile found sometime last week has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico and sent to Wright Field, Ohio for further inspection. The relationship between the Roswell event of July 1947 and ET and ET technology is very complicated. This 1950 document from the FBI vault could prove that we not only recovered flying saucers in the New Mexico desert, but that we found three small bodies inside the craft, dressed in metallic cloth. Did the military know that the flying disc they reportedly found was technology from out of this world? And if so, what was done with the recovered craft? This is Hangar 84. And uh, this is where the uh, craft and the bodies were actually brought into this hangar. But, uh, there was a lot of activity in this area here. And inside the hangar was the craft and also the bodies were laid out. There were five of them. So what happened after the crash at Roswell? Well, on the one hand, it was totally covered up, and it would remain covered up for at least the next 31 years, but other things happened. In the decades that follow, U.S. military technology begins to advance. Faster rockets, more sophisticated machinery. In less than a decade, America has a man in space. And 
just 20 years after Roswell, a man walks on the moon. Look at the boom in technology that occurred after Roswell in fiber optics and in integrated circuits. Stealth technology came around. All these things happened uh, within a very, very short time after Roswell. The military never acknowledges any technology stolen from alien craft. That is, until the world is introduced to Colonel Philip J. Corso. Colonel Philip Corso died in 1998, but before he did, he wrote a book called The Day After Roswell. In it, he described how a craft went down in Roswell, that this was a fact, that the craft was recovered, alien bodies were recovered, and that he uh, eventually was placed in charge of figuring out a way to reverse engineer that technology so that we could use it. Colonel Corso, a highly decorated officer, is considered the first in history to disclose the connection between our military and extraterrestrials. During his career in the U.S. Army, he works as chief of the Pentagon's foreign technology desk. He made it clear that while he was there, one of the projects that came under his uh, purview was uh, the fact that alien technology from the Roswell crash was being dealt with, and they wanted to see if there was a way that they could benefit by passing hardware they had to the right places. Reportedly, Corso is given remnants of computer circuitry, propulsion systems, indestructible fabric, and strange headgear. According to his story, he is asked to develop a program that would research and develop this alien technology. So allegedly, companies like Lockheed Martin, Lytton, these various large corporations were given this technology and saying, look, you guys take this stuff, reverse engineer it, develop it, and we'll allow you to have the patents on that technology and benefit from it. In exchange for that, the U.S. government, what do they get? Weaponry and control. But could the discoveries made from this alien technology not only win wars of the past and present, but wars of the future? Coming up next, from particle beams to Area 51, was our modern day technology pried from dead alien hands? We're about to expose the secret projects that still haven't gone public. Until now, this is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. From ancient visions of futuristic design to the incredible machines of tomorrow, could the technological leaps of mankind's past actually have been the invention of an advanced alien race and a secret allegedly hidden by the U.S. government for over 60 years? Did the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, talk to you or concern you about the un unknown and the unidentified flying object? Oh yes, we discussed it at every conference that we've had. There's enough evidence out there that there's a UFO cover-up happening in the U.S. government. But the question is, what is it that they're covering up? Some debris from Roswell was allegedly taken to a top-secret military test facility, the very existence of which the government would deny until 1995. A base known as Area 51. Area 51 is a top-secret military installation about 90 miles northeast of Las Vegas, Nevada. People have come out to claim that they worked inside the facility, and there's a lot of operations going on, which includes back-engineering alien technology. The government has never disclosed its exact purpose, but obviously testing of weaponry and the development of advanced technology is what goes on there. The place is so fantastic that pilots have nicknamed it Dreamland. Unsealed case file. Dreamland technology. In the 50s and 60s during the Cold War, one of the deciding factors was all on the shoulders of the people developing stealth technologies. A lot of UFO reports claim that these craft are not seen on radar, so it's obvious that they have some sort of stealth technology. But is it possible that the craft recovered at Roswell also had stealth technology? According to alien theorists, the U.S. military worked with government contractors to adopt the technology. In 1958, a decade after Roswell, the Lockheed Corporation announced the A-12 Oxcart. An aircraft that surfaced suddenly with technology designed to make the plane invisible to enemy radar. Perhaps the same way saucers at Roswell were invisible to us. 
What was amazing about the technology during Project Oxcart and the creation of the A12 is the way that the craft was built on the outside. It would actually absorb and in a very little way reflect the radar waves, ultimately making it invisible. This was really on the cutting edge of stealth technology. Was this next generation design adapted from the flying saucers reportedly found in New Mexico? And could further advances have come from the bodies or metallic cloth allegedly found inside those UFOs? One of the great mysteries of what was discovered in the Roswell debris was a strange kind of fiber. In terms of these creatures, they didn't get into their jumpsuits. There were no zippers, there were no buttons. It seemed that they were spun into their jumpsuits. What was the material they were wearing? This was taken to a number of um, research facilities. So they began to work on kind of a fibrous material that was so strong it could stop bullets. That material became known as Kevlar. Coincidentally, the American chemical engineering firm DuPont introduced Kevlar in 1971. It is said to be five times as strong as steel, able to stop a bullet, and yet light enough to be used as a boat sail. But extraterrestrial influence may reach far beyond what was found in the UFO. Alien technology may also have been discovered within alien bodies. Another piece of technology that came out of the Roswell crash, actually came out of the aliens in the Roswell crash, was night vision. But did military doctors discover night vision technology during an alien autopsy? According to one witness, uh, a doctor allegedly removed a lens from one of the deceased aliens of this crash. When they removed the lens, they could see in images in the dark. The lens was a light collecting device. It was night vision. This theory reminds us that one of the most fascinating details of alien technology is what it can teach us about extraterrestrial life. What else could we learn from technology still kept secret from the public? One of the most significant things that uh, Corso found about this technology was that there were no controls in the craft. According to Corso, the alien craft was not steered by alien hands. It was steered by their brains. Here's what Corso discovered, that there was a headpiece that was part of the crash debris at Roswell. And the, the pickups, these disc-like pickups on that headpiece corresponded to the lobes on the alien head. And that's how the ship was navigated. If machines controlled by our brains sounds like science fiction, prepare to have your mind changed. What scientists have done over the past 30 years is find ways to link the electrodes in a headpiece directly into the brains of a test subject. The U.S. government is working on technology that allows sensors to read the minds, essentially, of pilots and translate that into the flight controls so that you have completely handless flight. It sounds like science fiction, but it's science fact. Coming up next, will the next evolution in alien technology save the human race or destroy it? The final secret of UFO mechanics could reveal an element that will blow mankind to the stars. We could be the victims of just such a weapon, and we would never know. The footage you are about to see is real. Due to the graphic nature of some images, viewer discretion is advised. For years, we've heard chilling stories of alien abduction. Victims dragged from their beds in the dead of night, tormented and experimented on. And they take you and you're gone. Nobody knows. But some abductees believe that their alien captors may have left something behind. Astounding evidence surgically planted within their very flesh. An alien implant. And tonight, we'll meet the doctor who removes them. What you are about to witness is incredible real-life footage of an alien implant surgeon at work. The 
removal of an extraterrestrial object and a scientific explanation that could reveal the purpose behind alien abduction on planet Earth. This is something not of this world. Prepare yourself for what may be the most crucial extraterrestrial secrets ever to be revealed. Join us as the mystery of alien implants is unsealed. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unseal Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Thousand Oaks, California. It is just another day at ANS Research Incorporated. Dr. Roger Lear is preparing to operate on a patient. But this surgery is like nothing you have ever seen. This patient has something strange inside him. Something that neither he nor the doctor believe to be from our planet. The operation is designed to remove an alien implant. And the footage you are about to see is real. Alien implants are very rare, but they have been reported by a number of abductees. They're usually described to be small in size, often metallic. In fact, they usually appear on x-ray as metallic objects. They can be found in any part of the body, arm, leg, and even in the brain, middle of the brain. Dr. Lear has devoted his life to researching and investigating alien implants. My name is Dr. Roger Lear, and I am by profession a podiatric surgeon. I've uh, donated about the last 30 years of my life to the removal of objects from alien abductees. Known worldwide for his work, Dr. Lear believes these objects are planted inside humans by extraterrestrials. And the findings of his operations will speak for themselves. But how did these patients supposedly receive these alien implants? During a close encounter of the fourth kind. UFO sightings are usually categorized on a scale of close encounters. A close encounter of the first kind is when you have a witness or multiple witnesses seeing a craft in the sky. A close encounter of the second kind is when not only do you have the visual sighting, but you have physical evidence left behind. A close encounter of the third kind is when you not only have the visual sighting, evidence left behind, but you also see occupants either in or around the UFO. But a close encounter of the fourth kind adds a terrifying element. The witness is abducted by alien beings. Reports of alien abduction flourished throughout the 20th century. But there's evidence that indicates this has been going on for thousands of years and still do to this day. UFO studies estimate that 4% of the world's population, almost 280 million people, have experienced an alien abduction. But perhaps less than half that group are actually aware it occurred. Just because you can't recall a terrifying abduction in your past doesn't mean it didn't happen. A lot of things happen inside the human mind when we close our eyes. We have these dreams, we have these nightmares, we have these night terrors. Are they really just in our mind or is something else going on? According to some experts, abductions may be occurring when we are at our most vulnerable. But how long has this been happening to the human race? In the 1800s, frightening dreams were blamed on demonic forces known as mares. And this is the origin of the word nightmare. But are these beings more than folklore? Could these visions have been early sightings of alien creatures visiting us in our sleep? Picture this. You wake up in the middle of the night and you can't move your arms or legs. You hardly can breathe. You feel as if there's a pressure on your chest like some unknown force is holding you down. And you're scared to death and there's nothing you can do about it. You're alone. It's quiet, it's dark and you're vulnerable. And they can do it and they can come in without you having any knowledge because you're already asleep. You're asleep. They arrive. And they immobilize you. You wake up and you're already snared. That's it. And they take you and you're gone. Since he was a child, 
Mark Routley has reported being visited and experimented upon in the night by alien creatures. Three entities were in the room. I could see all around the room. I was completely coherent, completely awake, just immobile with fear. I don't know whether they, 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 they did something to make me immobile. I don't know. All else I remember is some kind of thing being drilled into my ear, and that was it. I was awake. But not all alien abductions take place within the victim's home. Some of the most famous abductees of all time have been taken on board alien ships for horrific experiments and have the scars to prove it. Coming up next, first-hand accounts of extraterrestrial experimentation lead to an incredible event, the surgical removal of a real alien implant. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. For decades, people have reported unexplained alien encounters, taken in the night against their will, torn from their beds, subjected to horrific experimentations. But were they abducted by alien beings? A typical alien abduction usually occurs at night. The witness is sound asleep in their bed. They have some type of experience. Sometimes it starts with a visual sighting of an alien. Other times they don't even hear, see, or feel themselves being taken. Videos such as this one from Pensacola, Florida, claim to show the appearance of an alien figure entering the victim's bedroom moments before abduction. According to the victim, he believed he was being abducted. So he set up a camera to try to capture evidence of what was happening. If this video is real, then we could be witnessing an alien creeping up on an unsuspecting victim. Many people claim that uh, you know these uh, videos of aliens can be faked, and they can. But what you can't argue with is physical evidence. Another thing that can make a uh, an abduction account credible or valuable um, are multiple witnesses. Uh, Taking, for example, the uh, Travis Walton case. Unsealed case file: the Travis Walton abduction. The case of Travis Walton made headlines in 1975. On the night of November 5th, he was driving home with several friends from a logging job in Arizona's Apache Sightgraves Forest. There was a group of uh, seven of us, man. Uh, we were working uh, up in the mountains in the woods. When he notices a strange light in the forest, they stop the car. Walton gets out and approaches it. Right at that instant, something hit me. Next thing I knew, I saw these forms over me, and when I finally got it into focus, I could see this creature looking at me, and I was weak. Days later, Walton reappeared, shocked and confused. I didn't know how much time had gone by, and I said, hey, feel your face, and I, and I felt, and I had this, you know, the week's growth of beard, and I was just totally shocked by this. I said, you've been gone five days. The phenomenon Walton experienced is known in the abductee community as missing time. Now, missing time is, again, a key component to this abduction phenomenon. People have reported that they're driving around, they see something strange, next thing they know, it's 20 minutes later, or it's two hours later, or in some cases, days later. But just because a victim has lost time during abduction doesn't mean the terrifying memories won't come flooding back. Unsealed case file. Memories of an abduction. I put a thing in the sky. Mm -hmm. It's shining on us. In this video, certified hypnotherapist Yvonne Smith conducts a hypnotic regression. The man recalling his abduction has recently experienced missing time. I don't like the feeling. I can't do what I want. I'm being held against my will, and I don't like it. The mental scars of these alleged abductees have much to tell us about what occurs on board alien craft. But some cases are also marked by more physical evidence. Oftentimes when an abductee uh, awakes, or a few days later, 
after the experience, they'll find scoop marks on their body that weren't there before. They're often very deep, uh, as if somebody gouged out a piece of flesh, but then they're healed as well. So the sudden appearance of these scars uh, and the healing process sort of defy uh, logical medical explanation. Doctors have studied these scars in hopes of uncovering the purpose behind such mystifying abductions. But could the ultimate clue to understanding alien motives be found deeper within the flesh of their victims? When dealing with physical evidence in abduction cases, not only do you have the scoop marks and the physical evidence outside the body, you also have another piece of evidence inside the body. Left within the bodies of some abductees is an unknown object with no explanation of purpose or origin. Could these objects actually be what doctors and investigators have referred to as alien implants? If alien implants are the key to understanding the abduction experience, then the doctor who's removing those implants is the key to our understanding. Coming up, the results of an actual alien implant surgery. And the alien implant surgeon reveals what he believes is the true purpose behind these extraterrestrial objects. This is Unsealed Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Alien abductions. They are the driving force behind science fiction novels and Hollywood films. But to many, it's a horrific reality. There's definitely no shortage of alien abduction stories that have surfaced around the planet. But what we really don't have in most of these cases is physical evidence to go along with it. But in those rare cases that do have it, those are the ones that we really have to focus on and pay attention to. Now, one California doctor has found the evidence that could explain why aliens are abducting members of the human race. And it's right under our skin. Unsealed case file, the alien implant surgeon. Dr. Roger Lear is currently leading a research effort to decode the alien implant enigma. Basically what we found that in approximately 10% of the cases of uh, alien abduction, individuals wind up with objects in their body, which can be seen on an x-ray, a CAT scan, and sometimes an MRI. There's no portal of entry, there's no scar, there's no way for them to have gotten it in there. Dr. Roger Lear is a pioneer when it comes to alien implant research. This is a man with a scientific background, a medical degree, that sees this abnormality inside the human body, knows that it shouldn't be there, has investigated it for years, and realizes the human race is missing the boat by ignoring this evidence. Dr. Lear was a skeptic of the alien implant phenomenon until he took a chance on a patient complaining of a foreign object in her foot. An object she claimed to receive during an alien abduction. I had been doing surgery for about 25, 30 years. And um, just to look at it was something quite strange. But we never saw anything that looked like this. There was this perfect T-shaped thing covered with this dark gray coating which you couldn't uh, cut through. Today, Lear and his team have conducted 15 surgeries with the goal of locating and extracting implants from their patients. To date, they have recovered 16 implants. He believes them all to be alien in origin. These objects have rarely been seen by the public. They display strange physical properties. Oh, look at that. Let's take a measurement of that one so we can... Are these implants actually inserted by captors from another world? What we're looking at here is uh, an object which has been removed from the human body from an individual who alleges alien abduction and contains uh, material that's not of uh, this earth. The doctor's certainty that the implants are not from this planet are not unfounded. According to Lear, the implants were analyzed by multiple research labs. Among them, 
was Los Alamos National Laboratories, home of the Manhattan Project, and one of only two labs in the United States trusted with U.S. nuclear weapons research. And the findings he reports are astounding. The lab came back with uh, pages and pages and pages of a report telling us the only conclusion that they could come to in the report was these were meteorite samples. Then I about, you know, fell over because here's, you know, one of the world's most famous laboratories. The only finding uh, that they would stand behind was that these were from meteorites. For a laboratory to say something is extraterrestrial, you have to look at the meaning of that. This is something not of this world. But a scientific lab has confirmed that an object connected to an alien abduction story by somebody who has no rhyme or reason to have a piece of meteorite in their arm has something that a laboratory labels extraterrestrial. To me, that's pretty big. With multiple labs concluding the objects are extraterrestrial, the only question that remains, what is the ultimate purpose of these implants? It is a question only the doctor himself can answer when we return. This knowledge should be the knowledge of every man, woman, and child on the face of this earth, and it's not. Every year, thousands of people around the world report strange and unusual encounters with visitors from another planet. They describe mysterious crafts in the sky and terrifying tales of abduction. Some are fantasy, but the stories you hear tonight just may be true. Ten tales recorded in history have been investigated and will be explained. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Ten experiences so strange that the only answer can be alien. Join us as the top ten alien encounters of all time are unseen. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unseal Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Of all the incredible extraterrestrial events reported throughout the world, only 10 are astounding enough to be included in our top alien encounters of all time. We begin our countdown with a trip to a place whose name says it all. Number 10, the Bermuda Triangle. On December 5th, 1945, a team of five Avenger torpedo bombers with 14 crewmen in all were on a training mission over the Atlantic Ocean off Bermuda in an area called the Bermuda Triangle. Now this was at the same time that at the end of World War II, American fighter pilots were seeing these floating balls of light called Foo Fighters. Toward the end of their exercise, the flight tower at Fort Lauderdale Naval Air Station received several calls from the pilots. They are scared and disoriented. The scrambled transmissions become strange, then cut off. The crew of 14 and their five planes disappear, never to be found. So if this was actually a UFO encounter, if a UFO intervened and interfered with the planes, then this would go down as the largest UFO abduction in history. All that we know for sure is, is that the planes vanished, vanished into thin air, as did other planes over the years. Although never proven, the disappearances of over 750 people passing through the Bermuda Triangle have been reported. If this is the work of alien abductors, the Bermuda Triangle might be one of the biggest extraterrestrial hotspots on planet Earth. Up next, the night we went to war with a UFO. Number nine. The Battle of Los Angeles. On February 24th, 1942, shortly after the United States entered the Second World War, 
100,000 people watched as an unknown craft invaded the skies of Los Angeles. Anti-aircraft guns went into action against unidentified aircraft in the Los Angeles area. Searchlights closely followed the object down the coast and kept it centered in their glare. 1,400 anti-aircraft shells are fired at the object, but it remains in the air, untouched. From the chaos that uh, this whole event caused, all these artillery shells going off, roughly five people were killed in the event. One of the things significant about this story is that it's one of the first times that our own defenses denied the possibility of a UFO and went on record doing so. The military claims the object is a weather balloon, but offers no explanation for the lack of damage to the craft. <laughs> the greatest military force in the world couldn't shoot down a lost weather balloon. I mean, the thing was just hovering there for almost an hour, and they couldn't shoot it down. We didn't know it at the time, but what people were experiencing on that night was probably one of the first mass UFO sightings in the United States. Number eight, the Solway Firth Spaceman. May 23rd, 1964, Cumbria, England. A father takes his daughter to a park overlooking the quiet inlet known as Solway Firth. He snaps a photo of the little girl, but it's when the film is developed that he makes a chilling discovery. Jim Templeton took a series of three photographs of his daughter. On two of the photos, nothing unusual was seen. But on the middle picture, what seems to be a strange figure, white clad and wearing some sort of space suit and helmet, is visible in the background. The photo was so puzzling that the Kodak Corporation even offered a cash prize to anyone who could debunk the image. That prize has never been claimed. To this day, the identity of this strange being is unknown. Coming up next, the countdown continues when a UFO collides with Earth. Alien beings take on the police. And later, the number one encounter that will leave you speechless. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. From lurking alien beings to mass abductions in the Bermuda Triangle, the top 10 alien encounters of all time have the power to amaze and terrify. But the countdown has only just begun. Join us as we continue with the most infamous UFO case of all time. Number seven, the Roswell incident. The Roswell incident has become one of the most well-known and biggest UFO cases of all time. But not many people really know the true facts surrounding the case itself. July 8th, 1947. Roswell Army Airfield reports they have recovered a crashed flying disc on a ranch in Roswell, New Mexico. The story immediately hits national airwaves. July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Days later, the military retracts their statement, claiming what was believed to be a flying saucer is nothing more than a weather balloon. The story just doesn't hold up. Soldiers came forward and said they were assigned to recover debris from the crashed disc. They recovered the alien bodies and even a live alien that was recovered. But then the bombshell dropped. In April of 2011, the FBI vault finally releases a document from 1950. It reports flying saucers found in the New Mexico desert and the three-foot bodies recovered from the crash. This could be the final confirmation we need to know that the Roswell story was real. Roswell may be the most important UFO crash in American history, but our next alien encounter made a huge impact on the other side of the world. Number six, the Russian UFO artifact. 
On January 29th, in 1986, in Dalnyagorsk, Russia, hundreds of people witness a red streak shoot across the sky and crash into a mountain known as Height 611. What investigators find at the site of impact is irrefutable proof that something crashed on the hillside and has disappeared. After the object crashed, all that was left was a three-meter-wide crater and these strange dark glass beads. Where did the rest of it go? And what was the nature of these strange glass-like beads? Chemical analysis reveals the beads contain significant amounts of rare earth elements. But that's not all. The Russians threw a lot of intelligence onto this problem, and these researchers and scientists claim that these beads had strange physical properties. They said that these beads did not reflect radar. One bead actually disappeared in front of their eyes. Some of these researchers claimed that these beads exhibited anti-gravitational properties. The origin of these beads remains a mystery. Today, they are being protected by a private facility in Las Vegas, Nevada. Number five, close encounter at White Sands. 1964, Socorro, New Mexico. On April 24th, Officer Lonnie Zamora is driving through the desert outside White Sands Missile Range. Suddenly, he sees a disk streak across the sky and disappeared over a ridge. Going off-road, Zamora comes upon a massive circular craft landed in the desert. He stops 200 yards from it. As he steps out from his vehicle, he notices two figures by the ship dressed all in white. He saw two very short beings outside the craft. When they discovered him that he was watching, it was like he startled them somehow. They turned around and got back into the UFO. Immediately, the craft raises up and charges straight towards Zamora. It flies over his head and away. It flew pretty close over his head. And in fact, he even sketched an insignia that he saw on the bottom of the craft. Investigators from the US Air Force and the FBI descend upon the scene. They find the sand is scorched and fused together. Impressions in the ground are not unlike those left on the moon by spacecraft. One of the most important facts about the Socorro incident is the witness himself. He was highly respected, and there was really no reason for him to put his job and reputation on the line to talk about this UFO. If true, the Lonnie Zamora sighting will rank as one of the first reported close encounters in modern UFO history. The Lonnie Zamora sighting is number five in our countdown of top 10 alien encounters. But just wait until you see what's coming up next. From extraterrestrial messages to terrifying abductions and alien beings caught on camera, if you think you know what the number one alien encounter of all time is, prepare to be shocked. Don't miss the final four when we return. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. We're counting down the top 10 alien encounters of all time. You've seen shocking stories of sightings, cover-ups, and UFO crashes. But you'll never believe what's next and what made the top of our list. Join us as the countdown continues with number four, the Phoenix Lights. March 13th, 1997. The entire city of Phoenix, Arizona is paralyzed by an incredible sight in the skies above. When thousands of people were outside on a very beautiful night looking up at the sky for a glimpse of the Hale-Bopp Comet, they also caught a glimpse of lights, orbs, balls of light in a V formation over a mile to two mile wide. This was thousands of people in the sixth largest city in the United States at the time, describing this strange object. The United States military decided to come out and say that the Phoenix lights were nothing more than aircraft flares launched from military jets outside of Luke Air Force Base. Now here's a problem. I filed a Freedom of Information Act request for all documents pertaining 
to any aircraft flares launched the evening of March 17th. They told me something very interesting. Luke Air Force Base didn't launch any aircraft flares. Their explanation simply doesn't add up. We can't explain the Phoenix Lights to this day, and the military won't even touch it. These incredible lights made headlines as one of the largest mass sightings in history. But the witness in our next account became world famous for a much closer encounter when he was abducted and taken on board an alien ship. Number three, the Travis Walton abduction. The Travis Walton UFO encounter is one of the most incredible UFO encounters in history. It was November 5th, 1975. There was a group of uh, seven of us men. Uh, we were working uh, up in the mountains in the woods. It was nearing dark as Walton and his co-workers headed home through Arizona's dense Apache Sitgraves forest when they noticed a light in the trees. When I got up to it and I, I was standing there looking up at it, uh, the sound suddenly got louder and it started to move and it was making this sort of a rocking motion. Right at that instant, something hit me. The next thing I knew, I was regaining consciousness, but I was in a lot of pain. I saw these forms over me, and when I finally got it into focus, I could see this creature looking at me, and I could hardly move, and my arm felt real heavy, and I was weak. What the hell are you doing? Come back! Walton's friends had left shocked after he disappeared into the forest, but not as shocked as they were when he reappeared days later. I didn't know how much time had gone by, and I said, hey, feel your face, and I, and I felt, and I had this, you know, the week's growth of beard, and I was just totally shocked by this. So you've been gone five days. What Travis Walton experienced was a close encounter of the fourth kind, actual alien contact and abduction. But the subject of our number two alien encounter not only made contact with a UFO, he also brought back a message. Number two, the alien code. On December 26th, 1980, Security personnel from RAF Bentwaters in the UK went out into Rendlesham Forest to investigate a series of lights where radar said an aircraft might have gone down. Upon entering the forest, Sergeant Jim Penniston and a small team of soldiers encounter a UFO that lands right before their eyes. He approaches the craft and places his hand on the surface. But as he does, Penniston is frozen while a mysterious code is beamed into his mind, a telepathic communication. I had an explosion of white light uh, where I couldn't see, I was blinded, and I uh, started seeing ones and zeros flashing. It wasn't until 30 years later that fellow witness Jim Burrow saw the code and realized what Penniston had received. As we were going through the book, he came to some pages that had zeros and ones on it. I looked at it and I said, these are binary codes. The team had the code deciphered, revealing a shocking message. Exploration of humanity. Then, latitude and longitude coordinates. Continuous for planetary advance. This alien message may hold the secret of mankind's future or its past. But our next shocking account could put us face to face with alien beings. Next, it's time to reveal the incredible real life footage behind our number one alien encounter of all time. And you won't believe your eyes. They may live and work in your town. They may be members of your government. They may be living next door or even teaching your children, but they are not who they appear to be. Are alien visitors living among us? I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal and they do die. From an alien race reported under the streets of Los Angeles to the discovery of a secret lab where humans aren't only conducting the experiments, humans are the experiments. Human body parts being used 
recombined with alien body parts, and it is literally a chamber of horrors. Tonight, we reveal the incredible secrets of extraterrestrial beings living among us, including a never-before-seen interview with a woman who claims the ability to channel an alien race. Greetings. We are their dreams. Join us as the secret of aliens among us is unsealed. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unseal Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Cusco, Peru. This jungle city was once capital of the Incan Empire. But it was in the late 1990s that archaeologists digging in these ruins came across an incredible discovery. Skulls unlike any creature known to man. Their size and shape were almost a perfect match to eyewitness descriptions of alien beings. The elongated skulls that we found are not only larger in terms of cranial capacity than modern humans, but the eye sockets are much bigger, the jaw is much larger, and also the actual bone material is sometimes 60% heavier than a modern human being. But could this actually be evidence of alien beings that lived and died on planet Earth? Now, on the one hand, there's a perfectly conventional explanation for this, that um, the babies, they were strapped to a backboard in such a way that it actually deformed the skull, so the skull became elongated, and that's what we see. But uh, UFO historians say something different. In 2011, the remains were taken to a museum where local news reported the head is triangular and tremendous, almost the size of the body, and that Spanish and Russian doctors have confirmed that indeed it is an extraterrestrial. Now these alien skulls have been turning up everywhere, not just Peru, Mexico, uh, Egypt, other countries uh, in the developing world, and it seems the more we dig, the more we find. The explanation may be found within a book published in 1882. Atlantis, the Antediluvian World, by American politician Ignatius Donnelly. Now in this book, it talked about these godlike beings that inhabited this land and perhaps were the original settlement on this planet. The question is, could these gods actually be aliens? The book explains that before the island sank, its leaders left for Egypt, Mexico, and Peru to become rulers of these countries, and reveals another intriguing detail, illustrations of their unique skulls. Perhaps the most well-known of these ancient leaders was Egyptian ruler King Akhenaten. He was the husband of Nefertiti and father of Tutankhamun, but could he also have been an alien king? When we look at the skull of the Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten, we see how, how it's deformed, how it's elongated. So it's not just larger, it, it, there's almost this tubular shape in that. What could that have meant? Was Akhenaten an alien? These characteristics may have been the product of genetic deformity, but some theorists propose rulers such as Akhenaten were connected to an alien race, a theory many believe applies to the world leaders of today. There have been reports of aliens interacting with world leaders for centuries, but none so interesting as with one of our own presidents. Coming up next, find out what the president might know about aliens among us, and later, Answers from an unlikely source, speaking directly to alien intelligence. This is Unsealed Alien Files.
Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Are human beings alone on planet Earth? Or is it possible aliens are living among us? If anyone on this planet knew of extraterrestrials interacting with us, it would have to be our world leaders. And they're not telling us. Some believe mankind's greatest encounter may have ended in a pact bartering human lives with an extraterrestrial race. A pact allegedly executed by none other than the President of the United States. Unsealed case file, the Presidential Alien Pact. Palm Springs, California. In 1954, U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower lands for a winter holiday. During the trip, he mysteriously disappears on the night of February 20th, igniting a firestorm of media speculation. But witnesses who came forward in later decades claim that during this time, Eisenhower visited Edwards Air Force Base, where he met with an alien race. Purported witnesses to this event claim that Eisenhower was actually asked there by the extraterrestrials in order to make some sort of deal. The aliens said to be at this meeting were a race known to ufologists as the Pleiadians, frequently described as taller and larger than regular humans. They are known for their shockingly blonde hair and clear eyes, earning them the nickname Nordics. And this meeting was very much tied in with an effort by these extraterrestrials to persuade the US government not to go ahead with the development of thermonuclear weapons. But just 10 days after the alleged meeting took place, the US's Bravo hydrogen bomb was detonated in Bikini Atoll. It appeared no treaty to end atomic weapons was reached. So another path was chosen, meeting with other groups of extraterrestrials who were not as opposed to the United States developing nuclear weapons. The second meeting between Eisenhower and extraterrestrials took place at the Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico, where he met with the Greys. And this time, a treaty would be reached. Their alleged deal they would provide advanced technology far beyond human capabilities. But in exchange, the Greys would be given the freedom to abduct humans for DNA and experimentation. But most frightening is the supposed location of these experiments, an alleged underground military laboratory known as the Dulce Base. For over 30 years, Top secret projects have been said to take place under the Archuleta Mesa. This area is where humans and extraterrestrials actually work together on a variety of projects, anything from technology to bioengineering. The existence of the Dulce base has been confirmed for decades by documents such as the Blue Planet Project and whistleblowers such as former government geologist Phil Schneider. I was involved in building a base inside of Belsay, New Mexico, which is Los Alamos Laboratory. And on the southwest part of the Archuleta Mesa, uh, we built an underground facility, a better part of three cubic miles hollowed out underground. Reports state that the base is seven levels deep. But the deepest levels are allegedly only used by alien researchers for their experiments on human beings. And it is literally a chamber of horrors. Human body parts are floating in this blue liquid dice. Human beings are being literally flown. Human body parts being used, recombined with um, alien body parts. No human beings alive. The tales are so horrifying that the area has become known as Nightmare Hall. But while this location may be one of the most frightening places aliens could live on planet Earth, evidence shows we may find a greater alien threat slithering beneath our feet, one that has taken the form of human beings. Coming up next, 
A war at the Dulce base claims human lives. Evil alien conspirators masquerade as our leaders, and we reveal an exclusive interview with what could be actual alien intelligence. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Humans were once thought to be the only intelligent life form on planet Earth. But some experts believe that aliens exist among us and may be working alongside the U.S. government in an underground alien facility known as the Dulce Base. In this Dulce Base, human beings and extraterrestrials are working together to hybridize a new species, part ET, part human, they're working with the U.S. military that's guarding it. They're working with U.S. scientists. It seemed that the U.S. and extraterrestrials were working together in peace until the Blue Planet Project revealed a 1978 incident known as the Dulce War. It detailed a confrontation that ensued when human soldiers attempted to infiltrate an alien-only research level. Witnesses, including respected government scientist Philip Schneider, have come forward, claiming injuries suffered at the hands of these alien races. I didn't waste any time to reach for my pistol and start shooting. And I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal and they do die. And the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish and burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me. And it was some form of electrical force because of the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me. And there was a, a green beret that was right behind me that risked his life. In fact, he died. Shoved me back in the bass and hit the button and took me up. And I wouldn't be alive talking to you today. It wasn't for him. I'm forever indebted. Why are these alien beings here? And what do they want from the human race? The answer may be found in one of the oldest reported alien species on planet Earth, the reptilians. It seems like through all the stories of abduction, the reptilians are probably the last ones you want to come across. The reptilians are usually described as being just that, like a reptile, usually a lizard-shaped head, uh, very much like a reptile skin. They're not peaceful, they are more uh, very much filled with experimentation, violence, pain. According to lore, reptilians do not live in the heavens. They do not have ships. They are said to live underneath the ground we walk on, or next to us, in the form of someone we trust and believe to be human. But they are far from legend. Unsealed case file. The Lizard People. 1933, Los Angeles. Population 1.3 million is a quickly growing American city. Engineer G. Warren Schufelt is surveying downtown Los Angeles for gold deposits when he reportedly makes an incredible discovery. A strange labyrinth of tunnels in the shape of a lizard and its inhabitants, the lizard people. In 1934, this geologist, this mining engineer, Warren G. Schufelt, discovered there was a hidden city under downtown Los Angeles. Catacombs and caves and tunnels and roads. And he believed that reptilian creatures had lived there. After drilling more than 250 feet into the city, officials order the shafts sealed. It is unknown what, if anything, has been found. But the story of subterranean reptilians lives on. Even going back to biblical times, the serpent or the reptile is really seen as this evil type creature. These ancient cultures not only describe the reptilians' sinister appearance and nature, but special powers unlike any other alien race. One thing that people talk about the reptilians and their capabilities is that they can shapeshift. So not only do they look like reptilians in their true form, but they can actually shapeshift into something that looks like you and I. If real, 
Who knows what positions of power and influence they've occupied in the past and what they could occupy now. Some people go so far as to say that uh, members of the royal family, uh, political leaders, the global elite are these reptilians and that occasionally these aliens in human form uh, let down their guard showing some sort of reptilian behavior or appearance. If true, these beings could lead us to extinction, all from behind an impenetrable human disguise. Is there any hope left for humanity? The most common portrayals of aliens is that they are here to harm us, here to take us over. However, there are aliens who in fact are said to be our ancestors and that they are here in order to help us and to guide us. Unsealed case file, the Arcturian message. The Arcturians are considered by many to be the most advanced civilization in the galaxy. They have been known to channel their message through humans who act as mediums. My name is Suzanne Lee. I am a PhD psychotherapist and I have been in communication with the Arcturians since about 1994. Sue Lee claims the ability to bring a message from the Arcturian race through her own body. It is a message about the future of humans and aliens on planet Earth that she will channel before our very eyes. What I'm about to do right now is to allow the Arcturians to come through. When we return. This photograph pictures young Elizabeth Templeton posing in an area known as the Solway Firth. She is six years old and appears alone. But you are not seeing the entire image. Some believe that there was an alien figure there and that this is captured on film. Tonight, we expose what could be the first photograph of an extraterrestrial being. An incredible true story that connects alien encounters around the world reveals the real men in black. These people might not have even have been human. And uncovers an extraterrestrial battle for the most powerful weapon on planet Earth. This is a tale like nothing you have ever heard. Join us as the mystery of the Solway Firth Spaceman is unsealed. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed. Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Nuclear winter. Plants have been scorched from the Earth. Water has turned to acid. Man has perished. The victim of his own devastating weapons. Alien theorists believe this could be the future of planet Earth. A fate that may have been determined decades ago by a mysterious being in a most unlikely location. The city of Carlisle, United Kingdom. This quiet working community rests near the border of England and Scotland. It is May of 1964, and four young men from Liverpool, only 80 miles south, are taking over the world. On a Saturday afternoon, local firefighter Jim Templeton takes his wife and his daughter Elizabeth on an outing to the park near a quiet inlet known as the Solway Firth. They hike to a clearing, stopping to take a picture. But what he is also about to photograph is believed to be the first evidence of an alien being caught on film. So as Jim Templeton headed to the marsh, the only thing out of the ordinary he noticed was that the animals, the sheep and the cows that were there, were huddled together and acting frightened. But of what? The girl poses with a little bouquet, and her father snaps the shot. A week later, he picks up the developed film at the chemist. 
result is chilling. Jim Templeton took a series of three photographs of his daughter on a single lens reflex camera. On two of the photos, nothing unusual was seen. But on the middle picture, what seems to be a strange figure, white clad and wearing some sort of spacesuit and helmet, is visible in the background. The image runs in the local paper, creating an international sensation. People around the world identify the figure as a being, not from our planet. It becomes known as the Solway Firth Spaceman. In 1964, a case like this was gold dust. Lots of people had a story, but very few people actually had their story backed up with a picture. This really does look like something either from a sci-fi movie or real cutting edge uh, technology. But the figure does not appear to be wearing any spacesuit of the era. Could this be the first evidence of an alien being caught on camera? Skeptics have said that the creature wasn't really a creature, it was a beekeeper, a beekeeper in a beekeeping outfit, right? With a mask and protective garments and stuff. But if it's a beekeeper and Templeton, as he said, reeled off those three photos in succession, how could a beekeeper appear in the middle photo, but not in the first two? It makes no sense. Nowadays, we're used to the idea that it's easy to fake a photograph with computer programs. Back in 1964, it was a very different story. Indeed, authorities at Kodak, who made the film, were sent this and were asked, is this a fake? They came back and said, no, we see no evidence of any trickery here. In fact, the image is so eerie, so incredible, that Kodak offers a lifetime supply of film to anyone who can debunk or otherwise explain the image. That prize has never been claimed. But if this figure was in fact an alien being, what was he doing on the Firth that day? And what could it mean to our planet? The answer could reveal the true identity of the Solway Firth spaceman. And it all begins with a visit from the Men in Black. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. In 1964, Englishman Jim Templeton photographed a figure that would forever be known as the Solway Firth Spaceman. It would ignite a firestorm of media speculation about aliens among us. And the next clue to the Spaceman's true identity would come in a chilling visit from two of the most frightening figures in UFO history. Unsealed case file, The Men in Black. Shortly after this incident, Jim Templeton was visited by two men. They claimed to be from the authorities and quizzed him about the whole incident. These two individuals were very smartly dressed and all in black. Furthermore, they referred to themselves by numbers all of this looked very strange. Templeton would later recall these beings as eerie and sinister. They demand that Templeton drive them to the site where the photo was taken. They took him to the marsh so that he could show them where he took the photo, as if they were investigating what could have happened on the marsh to get that image in the photo. But when Templeton asked the men for identification, they never showed it. All they said was they worked for Her Majesty's government. Out on the Solway Firth, the men asked Templeton where he stood and where his daughter sat for the photo. They then ask a surprising and unsettling question. They want to know where he saw the second spaceman. But Templeton never saw a second spaceman. When he insists there was only one, they become strange and hostile. Why would they have asked him about a second spaceman? Did they know something Templeton did not know? Templeton's suspicions went all the way up to the top of his head. He was bothered by the fact that they said he saw a second spaceman when he didn't, bothered by the fact that they showed him no identification. 
and bothered by the fact that they seem to intimidate him and tell him not to talk about this. Templeton refused to give them anything, refused to cooperate with them, and they simply left without doing anything. The British Ministry of Defense denies ever having investigators on the case. But sightings of these strange men are not limited to the United Kingdom alone. The interrogation Jim Templeton experienced is frighteningly familiar for those who report their alien sightings to the public. Looking back over the years, a number of UFO sightings have been followed by reports of strange black clad figures interviewing the witnesses and suggesting very strongly that they don't talk to anyone about what happened. These sinister figures have been dubbed the men in black. Could the strange investigators who questioned Templeton on the Solway Firth have been the real men in black? Almost every event in Templeton's experience matches those of other people that have experienced men in black throughout the years. They usually travel in groups of two or three. They're dressed in black. Oftentimes they have large eyes. They're very, very aggressive in the way they handle UFO witnesses. And the similarities do not end there. Almost every reputable men in black sighting over the last 60 years happened within days of a UFO encounter. But how did they even know where Templeton lived? These men often show intimate details about their subjects, as though they've been under surveillance. A fact that supports the theory that these investigators are part of an elite government unit controlling the public's knowledge of alien secrets. According to documents like the Blue Planet Project, these men in black are a splinter group of the Air Force known as the Delta Team. This group's sole purpose is to suppress any public information of UFOs recovered by our government. But no government agency has ever confirmed their existence. The way Templeton described these men doesn't sound like they're from the government. They were awkward and clumsy. They lacked social graces. Their grammar was a little bit broken. They referred to one another as numbers rather than names. Very strange. But if they're not government, who are they? Others who have met them face to face also describe strange details that seem decidedly unhuman. They acted very robotic. They acted almost mechanical. So it leads one to believe, as other people have described these individuals, that these people might not have even have been human. Who are these creatures? Are they extraterrestrials? Are they here to intimidate people, to keep them from talking about UFO sightings? Or are they here to find out what the UFO sightings were? Are they an ET investigation team? Not human, but aliens trying to keep human beings from spreading the truth about UFOs. What could they have been out to find? And did they discover it? The answer could not only reveal the identity of the Solway Firth spaceman, it might just save every human life on planet Earth. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. In 1964, Jim Templeton photographed a figure perceived around the world as evidence of an alien among us on planet Earth. But who is this mysterious being known as the Solway Firth Spaceman? And was he alone? The answer begins more than half a world away in Woomera, Australia. Woomera was the test facility running trials with the Blue Streak, which was Great Britain's first intercontinental ballistic missile. The Blue Streak missile was designed by the British to serve as a nuclear deterrent weapon in the Cold War. The Blue Streak missile program was without doubt a program of extreme significance for the British government. The crucial first test for this missile is scheduled for May 24th, 1964. The launch team has prepared months for this moment. But during the countdown, the unthinkable happens. The launch is halted. The reported cause? Two unknown figures suddenly appearing on the launch pad. There was ostensibly a video of two white-garbed, quote-unquote, spacemen running 
across the launch pad of this British missile. Now, what's so strange is that these individuals look just like the Solway Firth spaceman Templeton himself said that the creatures that were described in the video looked exactly like the creature that was in the photograph. Men in Black had asked Templeton about a second spaceman that did not appear on camera. Could there be a connection to this pair of figures interfering with the missile launch? Why were these creatures, assuming they were actually there, interrupting a highly classified missile test launch? What was their objective? When the missile is finally launched, the test is determined to be a failure. But is this exactly what the alien beings desired? A relationship seemed non-existent until a shocking connection between the two incidents came to light. The Blue Streak rocket, tested in Woomera, Australia, had been assembled at RAF Spadedom Base, less than 30 miles from Solway Firth. So is there a connection between the Solway Firth spaceman and the Blue Streak missile launch? Blue Streak is exactly the sort of thing that back in 1964, any visiting extraterrestrials would have been most interested in. For decades, there have been countless incidents connecting man-made ballistic weapons with UFO and alien sightings. Since we first detonated our nuclear weapon in the 1940s, many people and experiencers have believed that whether it be a nuclear weapon or some type of uh, missile that is going to deliver that nuclear weapon, that they're drawn to that. Less than three weeks later, a UFO sighting off the coast of California could explain the connection between these mysterious spacemen and lethal missiles. Unsealed case file, the UFO missile attack. Big Sur, California, June 10th, 1964. Just 17 days after Jim Templeton's photograph was taken, another alien form is caught on camera. This time, it is captured by a US Air Force team filming an Atlas test missile. The similarities between the American Atlas rocket and the British Blue Streak missile were both intercontinental ballistic missiles. They were launch vehicles for ICBMs. They were both launched, even though they weren't armed at the time, but both had reported interferences with strange phenomena. Leading the crew is a lieutenant colonel named Robert Jacobs. According to Jacobs, the missile test fails in the final stage. He has the test footage developed for review. As soon as the footage is processed, Jacobs is ordered to report to his superior officer. And he saw these two strange men in dark suits. And they asked him what he saw. Well, all Jacobs saw, of course, was the missile rising off its launch pad and arcing over the horizon. Then they showed him the film. And all of a sudden, it shoots a beam of light into the warhead at the tip of the missile. Moves around, does another one, moves around, does another one, and the, and the warhead falls off. According to Jacobs, the footage and the men in dark suits disappear, never to be seen again. Were these men the same men in black who had questioned Jim Templeton only days before? And were they attempting to hide evidence of UFOs attacking our nuclear-capable weapons? It could mean basically that there's an extraterrestrial culture that's surveilling our planet, very concerned about our use of nuclear weapons and telling us point blank, we will not let you use nuclear weapons. We will interfere with your missiles. The Solway Firth spaceman may have been on our planet to disarm nuclear weapons. But what is their goal? And who is hiding under their helmets? The answer will shock you when we return. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. The time to act is now. 
There are three simple steps you can take to unseal the truth. Follow on Twitter. Follow the unsealed Twitter feed to receive breaking news of the latest alien happenings as they develop. Tell your story. Have you seen a UFO? Whatever we encountered affected our memory. Upload stories and pictures to our interactive map. Join the movement. Get the unsealed bracelet and the unique code hidden underneath to access exclusive content. Stop living in the dark. It is definitely coming this way. Get involved in the fight to unseal the truth. Now. The image of the Solway Firth Spaceman revealed strange visitors attempting to disarm our nuclear weaponry. But what creatures could be under the helmet of this mysterious spaceman? It's the 1960s. The world was on the brink of war. Who'd be most interested in keeping humans in the 1960s from destroying themselves? Well, the answer is simple. It's other human beings but other human beings from the future. Could the spaceman have been a human sent back from the future to prevent nuclear annihilation? If we invent time travel in the future, wouldn't we try to fix our mistakes in the past? If true, we may have been saved from an apocalypse of our own design and owe our very existence to the being known as the Solway Firth Spaceman. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth.